Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to my channel. So, we all remember that drugstore haul that I did a couple of weeks ago, right? Well, was it even a couple of weeks ago? I don't even know what date it is, what year it is, what time it is. Everything's just so bizarre right now. But I'm finally going to be testing out a whole load of those products. I have me a little selection here. Uh, basically, we're going to be testing out new releases from the drugstore. Now, these are legitimate new releases because I actually purchased these uh, from drugstores in America while I was over there. So it's like legit because here in Australia, sometimes we don't get new releases for like four or five months, like not for ages. Um, so yeah, legitimate new releases. We're going to test them full face, see what we think, see if there are any hits in here or if they're all really lame fails. <laughs> now, obviously, if you are new here, please please make sure to hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, give the video a thumbs up if you like it, sell your soul to me, no, not really. <laughs> and with that being said, let's jump straight into the video. Now, we got a post Easter situation happening. It happens every, I mean, it's like clockwork, me and chocolate, me and sugar, I break out. It's not a big deal, we, we're over it. Now, I've been so excited to try this primer. This is brand new from NYX. Uh, it is their Bear With Me Hydrating Jelly Primer. Now, I do have, I believe it's an Illamasqua primer. This one is essentially a dupe for, oh, and I do have a full face of dupes video coming up as well. Basically, this is a really lightweight hydrating primer. It's not meant to add any heaviness to the skin. And it's just so cool because it is a jelly texture. If you can see, it's even cooler because it like reforms like the the surface, so you can stick your finger in it. It's oh, a strange thing to say. See the texture of it? It's like a full-on jelly, but you can mess up the top, stick your finger in it. There's no other way to say it really. Uh, but then it reforms like flat. It's really cool, but yeah, that's the texture. I like when I did that haul and actually, oh my gosh, it feels so nice on my skin. And um, when I did that haul and like tested it on the back of my hand, I was like, yeah, this looks legit. So it does feel super lightweight. It has like a cooling sensation on the skin. It feels as if, I mean, the best way to describe it, it feels as if I'm applying like a gel moisturizer, like a water-based gel moisturizer. It feels beautiful. Oh, I'm just gonna put it all down my neck as well. Yes. Oh, those builders are back next door. No, I started filming at 7 a.m. in the hopes but the noise is back, so I hope that it doesn't interfere too much. All right, so that has set down on the skin really well. It's got kind of like a tacky-ish feel to it. Oh, and I got it in my hair. That's cute. Um, not greasy tacky, but like sticky tacky. Like it kind of feels like anything you put on top will stick to it really well. So far, I, I like it. It feels good. <gasps> and it's already reformed the perfectly smooth layer on top. That is like so cool. A science project. What? How? I need to know. All right, next up for foundation, the CoverGirl Matte Ambition. I was quite excited. Uh, all day shine free foundation. It's meant to be, it's their full spectrum. So I do believe it is a full coverage foundation. I've read a lot of good stuff about this. I'm really excited to try it out. Uh, I have got the shade Light Neutral. And I did kind of have a little bit of difficulty sort of selecting a shade in store. I feel like there was no real orange. Oh, no, that one doesn't look too bad, actually. Maybe the glass makes it look a different color. They all kind of looked peachy, pinky undertone as opposed to, like, a nice, warm, kind of, like, yellow undertone. So, so far, the coverage doesn't seem amazing, to be honest. Because this is full coverage, right? It's definitely more of a medium kind of a coverage. Like, I'm, I mean, I've put it over top of that zit and it's done nothing. Oh, coverage is a little better on this side. And the shade's not too bad. I am actually freshly self-tanned yesterday. Because what else do you do when you're in isolation and no one's going to see you? You self-tan, you put on a ball gown, you walk around the house. So I do think that the colour would match me quite well, you know, when I'm my usual shade. When I'm not this bronze. Um, it might be slightly light at the minute. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Sometimes I do oxidise down quite a bit darker. I know, I'm not really loving the coverage. I'm feeling like... It looks quite, whoa, there's little white dots coming out of the product. There's like little white dots, little white flecks coming out of the foundation. What is going on? Maybe it's the primer, maybe the foundation. The primer don't work together, but I'm definitely not, I'm not really in love with this so far. All right, so here it is all blended out. Definitely a medium coverage. Um, it's not a full coverage. I'm still getting these weird little white flecks popping out of the foundation. They look like, it looks like white dust nearly. What even is that? I'm not too sure what the go is there, but overall not really loving the look of this one. I feel like it doesn't, I don't know, you can see it on the skin. I feel like it doesn't do really any favours for texture. 
The coverage isn't amazing. I've built it up. It does feel quite lightweight on the skin. So there is that. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe it'll look better once it's powdered down. Who knows? But those weird little white flecks. What is up with that? All right, next up for brows, I have the LA Girl Brow Pomade. Uh, this is the shade Deep Brown. The shade looks promising. I feel like I've spoken about this problem a lot, nine times out of 10, at drugstore or more affordable brow products, especially for someone with my hair color. They're always way too warm, way too red, and they end up looking quite red on the skin. So hopefully we don't have that happening with this. Oh, it's quite a firm, like it's not overly creamy, which I do actually really, really like. I hate brow pomades that, you know, your brush pretty much ends up like sliding straight off your face and you end up with like really angry looking eyebrows. Shade does look promising. So, so far, I mean, it's a bit early to tell, but it seems pretty easy to work with. I can pretty much tell straight away if I love or hate a pomade. Yeah, I really like that. Nothing bad to say about the pomade. It's good. All right, brows are done. I might have cheated a little and put eye primer on off camera because I don't have any new drugstore stuff. And the concealer that I'm testing today, I do not know how it goes underneath eyeshadow. So yeah, we did a little cheaty cheat. Now I'm so excited about this eyeshadow palette, you guys. Ooh, this is probably the best, like my most favorite drugstore makeup purchase. Uh, while I was in LA, it is the, oh, that's really funny, it's LA Girl. LA Girl Pro Artistry Eyeshadow Palette. This is beautiful. It does come in another colorway. Uh, it was sold out and I actually managed to snag the last palette on the shelf as well. It is gorgeous. I swatched it in that whole video and I was like, oh, like it's so pigmented. It's ridiculous. It's disgusting. But this is what it looks like. It's so pretty. So 20 shades, a mixture of mattes and shimmers. Really love this vibrant blue green line here. Um, just, yeah, everything about it so far. I mean, I haven't tested it yet, but everything about it, I love. Now I was thinking, I was stinking i mean let's show some swatches oh God. that can't be legal though look the pigmentation in this is absolutely off its face you touch the color and it's a full opacity there's so much payoff oh i, just, I, just, I can't wait so to start the look i'm going to take this sort of pale oh my brush is a bit dirty we'll be right and um, this pale beigey matte kind of a color and i'm just going to work a little through the crease it's actually kind of hard oh it's actually quite a pale color um it's kind of hard that would be good for highlighting the brow bone actually quite nice it's kind of hard for me to not use the orange we all know i love me a warm eyeshadow look but so many of you are like nikia no we need a break from warm so we're gonna try and do something a little bit different basically i'm just setting down that primer I applied off camera i did use a gerard cosmetics uh clean canvas one um it's my favorite at the minute uh, it and the mac one are my two most loved most used all right next up i'm going to go into this sort of cool tone brown it's another matte Ooh, they're not too powdery or chalky actually which is really nice and i'm gonna pop a little of that through the crease basically this is going to add like a bit of a transition shade and it's kind of going to map out like where we are going to put i feel like i want to do like green 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 like that it's kind of like an aqua this one here, this is the one I'm talking about. I'm just hoping that these shadows translate on the eyes the same way that they do, like with swatches, because the swatches are next level. I'm gonna go in with a flat brush now. I want to see how this goes with just a dry brush without any help, any assistance, because they do really feel so sticky and creamy. And this one is actually a bit of a duo chrome. It's got like a gold sort of through it. All right, so payoff isn't bad. I wouldn't say it's the most amazing with a dry brush, but you can sort of like work it onto the lid if you apply it like this. Oh, oh my gosh, look at that. That is correct. Oh, maybe we should do like just like a one color eyeshadow look. Oh my gosh, the foil in that is insane. That looks like it's a liquid, like it should be a liquid. It just applies so beautifully. So just packing that all over the lid. I mean, shimmers don't typically always work well with a dry brush anyway, but I always like to test for you guys. So you've got as much information as possible before you purchase. Back in with the brush, and I'm just gonna start building the 
outer portion of this eye. You ready for this though? This is how crazy this shadow is. Okay, it's on my finger. Watch this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so much payoff. And then just sort of blending it outwards and upwards a little so that it gives that sort of, you know, angular kind of a look. I really like that color, gorge. Now for the lower lash line, I'm really not gonna be doing much at all. I'm gonna pick up um, a little bit of this and maybe a tiny bit of the deeper brown and just smudge that through. So just mixing those two browns through the lower lash line. We'll use concealer to clean up later. We good. All right, next up, this white shimmer. I'm gonna take a tiny, actually, oh, I just totally dug my brush into it. Why, Nakia? Well, actually, maybe that's not the right brush. It does look quite chunky, the formula of this one. It's not too, not too sure how that's gonna go on a, oh. Yeah, that one's kind of gonna be worked in. Um, but I was gonna use it to highlight, but. It's more of like a chunk. It's chunk. So I think we'll do that with a highlighter later on. All right, moving on to mascara now. The CoverGirl Exhibitionist. Yes, Exhibitionist Mascara. I've had so many people rave on about this. I've never tried it. So yeah, we're gonna test it out. I've got very black here. Apparently it gives you really curled, super long lashes, like with lots of volume. Oh, it's got a very similar brush to the L'Oreal Paradise Mascara. Um, I might need to scrape off the excess though. Also says that it is uh, clump proof, smudge proof, and flake proof. I do wish the rim of the tube was smaller though, so that it scraped off more product. Like I've just spent quite a bit of time scraping it. But let's put a bit of this on. Mm, don't know. Oh my gosh, yes, that foundation, there is a little white specks all over my face. It's happening. This mascara isn't wowing my pants off. Feels kind of thick and sticky. There's my lashes with it, there's without. Mm, I feel like the formula needs to dry out a bit. Now for lashes today, I wanna to go with something like a little bit soft-ish, but something that also does give lots of structure. So I have our Amelia Lash here. This is from my own brand, Nikia Joe Cosmetics. This pair here is from our Naked Collection and they've got like a like a seamless bonded band so you can't see any knots. So if you do choose to wear them with that eyeliner, you can, but I'm gonna quickly pop these on off camera because I feel like this video is gonna be way too long already and I'll be right back. All right, so lashes are on. Um, I still, I put a little bit of mascara on the lower lash line, but I kept the green only on the top and I'm so happy with how it looks. Like it's a pop of color, but I feel like it's also really wearable and like anybody could kind of, well, I guess feel confident in it. Um, so that's done, but we need to discuss this foundation. Oh, I'm gonna zoom you in. Hopefully you'll be able to see. Oh, it looks so bad. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. Hopefully you can, but for starters, there's these weird white, they're only tiny, like here's one here, one here. They're like little white dots, nearly of like powder or something popping out of the foundation. And also it has settled into all of my pores. My skin looks really textured. It's already creased. Like I have not had this on for a very long time at all. It looks so bad. So I don't even know. Is it fixable? I just don't know. And even when you like sort of go back over, push those weird little white things back in, they come back and they come back in different spots. I can't really get the creasing to go away. The foundation's normally, oh, I don't know. And you can see redness everywhere. The coverage is not great. I just, I, I'm not a fan of this CoverGirl foundation. To fix it uh, and to try and keep it as authentic as possible, I'm gonna grab another CoverGirl foundation. Maybe we can fix it. All right, I grabbed another one. CoverGirl Vitalist A Healthy Elixir. Interestingly has the same packaging. I really like the formula of this one. They should have just stuck with this. I'm just gonna put a very, very light layer over the top of this other one. Let's just pray that this works and it doesn't make it worse because at this point I'm nearly ready to wipe off the foundation and start again. Like the camera will not be doing it justice. It looks so textured and gross. Oh, but this one, CoverGirl, this formula is so much better. Oh, the coverage is so much better too. Like it's covering up all those weird spots of redness. This could be a hot creasy mess. So now that I've got like essentially three layers of foundation on, but I do feel like my skin is looking a lot better than it was. So 
we'll take it. I also didn't use the entire amount of that product. Like, there's still a fair bit left on my hand. Now for concealer today. Oh, this is a concealer that everybody basically bows down to. Uh, the e.l.f. 16-hour camo concealer. Apparently this stuff is insanely amazing. Um, I do believe it's Tati who just like swears by it. Uh, camouflage those pesky spots and under eye circles with this high coverage crease resistant 16 hour wear concealer. Oh, it's a very light shade though. This will be interesting. So this is what the packaging looks like. I have the shade light beige. It was sold out in all the other shades. So I basically got what I could. Oh, it's got a big wand uh, similar to the Tarte Shape Tape wand. I'll pop three dots under my eyes. Let's blend them first and see how it goes. I'm going to take the same sponge that I used for the foundation. This is our Pro Plus Perfecting Sponge. It's got two flat surfaces, like a cutoff on the side and then also a cutoff on the bottom. The bottom's really good for like blending over larger areas if you want to use it that way. Ooh, the coverage of this concealer is quite nice. Blending that right under the lash line. Gosh, it's very brightening this shade as well. Very nice to blend. Like I'm not finding it to be patchy or crepey looking on the skin. Gosh, it goes a long way. Like the excess that's left on my sponge pretty much spread over my entire forehead. And look, I can do my chin. I can highlight everywhere. So yeah, three dots under the eyes may be too much. Okay, I really, really like that concealer. It's very, very full coverage. It still feels really nice and lightweight on the skin. Um, big fan, big fan. All right, for powder, I've got this new one by Revlon. It is the Photo Ready Candid Anti-Pollution Setting Powder. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this does come in straight translucent. I've got the banana shade. So this is quite yellow. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. So picking that up on my sponge, I'm going to start setting down underneath the under eye. I will come back and uh, blend a little bit of that brown shadow through here and also pop more mascara on because I feel like I've basically covered it with that e.l.f. concealer. Ooh, this banana powder is quite brightening. It might look a little bit crepey on me though. Also feels a little on the tight side. That creasing's back on my forehead. I mean, let's be real. My skin does not look good at all today, but we're sticking with it. Too far committed at this point not to. Like, to remove it all and start again. All right, so this powder is quite lightweight. It is visible on my skin, though. Like, it's not completely... Like, it doesn't completely melt into my skin. It is still a little visible. All right, next up, moving on to bronzer. This is uh, one of the new ones by Wet n Wild. It's their Color Icon Bronzer. Shade name is what Shady Beach is. I love that. I, I love a good pun. I usually do really, really enjoy Wet n Wild cheek products. Like, they're few and far between ones that I've found that actually disappoint me. Um, so hopefully this one is the same. So I'm going to start shaping my face with it, but then also blending it upwards. So kind of contouring and shaping, but also using it as a bronzer as well. I do this is sort of how I do my cheeks most of the time. And I always work in an upward direction to lift the face. She's turning 30 this year. We need a, all the help. Oh, that is a lovely bronzer. It nearly looks like it's kind of photoshopped my skin a little bit. Helped smooth it out. Ooh, I like that. I then bring it up and blend it into my hairline. I want to look sun-kissed and shaped all at once. So it's very smooth. I feel like it's not patchy when you apply it. I'm not finding it difficult to apply. I'm also not finding that you put your brush in it and then you end up with way too much product on your brush. Like it's pretty easy to work with and I do quite like this color. It's a little maybe on the ish side there was definitely other shades so if this one's not up your alley formula wise though oh i do really really like the formula it can also be layered quite well too if you want to like deepen it up Ooh, nice for blush i have one of the new nyx sweet cheeks blushes this is the shade daydream now it does have a very slight shimmer to it by the looks of it but it's not like a chunky kind of a shimmer and it seriously very much reminds me of NARS Orgasm this color. This might be a good dupe actually. I'm gonna pick it up on like a fluffy cheek brush. It's meant to be a cream, what did they say? Creamy powder. Oh, that's very pretty on the skin. I was a little bit concerned originally. Oh, okay, there's a lot of shimmer. Not necessarily like shimmer, like chunky pieces of shimmer, but there's a lot of sheen in it. Like, look at the glow that's giving my cheek. That's pretty, but then straight on, it looks like the color. I like 
like that. Not normally the hugest fan of sort of shimmery blushes because for me with my skin type textured skin, it just usually it just ends up looking kind of crazy. That one's actually very fl Look at that. It looks like a straight up highlighter. Oh my God. But then look straight on. It looks like a soft pink. That's nice. Now the highlighter I'm particularly excited about, Revlon Skin Lights. Since I saw these in their package, I was like, oh, haven't actually tested it on my cheeks yet. Uh, the Prismatic Highlighter uh, in the shade Daybreak Glimmer, which is like a beautiful gold. Look at the pattern. It's like all over the pan. It's like stunning. Oh, you can kind of see it a bit better there. It's stunning. Now. Let's just hope it lives up to how pretty it looks. Oh, Revlon. Oh, what have you done? Oh, this might be a new favorite. So it's so, like, so super finely. I think it might even be a baked. Feels like a bit of a baked formula. It says pure glow without the glitter, non-cakey. Silky soft texture with crystal-like pigments for a flattering pure glow. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to protest that. That is exactly what this product is like. Oh my gosh, it's just, oh, it's beautiful. Maybe I'll sit in the front window and just look highlighted for the people walking their dogs to walk past and I'll blind them. <laughs> that is stunning. Oh, it is like so full on. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of that on a smaller brush and highlight my brow bone like I wanted to earlier. That white shimmer in the palette's a little disappointing. Oh, she is glowy and hoey. Mm -mm. Got another Wet n Wild product here. This is a brand newie from them Oof, as well. And it is the Liquid Catsuit. It's a high shine lipstick. So it's like a hybrid between a liquid lipstick and a lip gloss. I'm really interested to see how it goes. The shade is Chick Got Real. And I actually think this is going to be a good color with this eye. Total fluke. It's weird. When you press your lips together, the shine kind of disappears. Like it doesn't, it's, it's into your height. Maybe you just put heaps on, we'll see. So I'm not overly wowed. It is, like it's a little streaky. It's kind of patchy-ish. Um, you would have to, if you wanted full opacity, you would have to put another layer on. And then I feel like if I put another layer on, it would just be like a sticky hot mess kind of a thing. But I really, really like the color. Like the color is so pretty. But there you go. This is the finished look. Um, I'm very happy with how this turned out. And like I said, I think I will sit in the front window and just be like, hi, creep people out. <laughs> Definitely found some products that I really enjoyed. And I also found some products that I really didn't enjoy that much. Uh, obviously, the foundation was a fail. I did quite like the primer when applying it. It felt really, really nice. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin, but I need to test it and wear it and, you know, to give like a full verdict. Love, 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 love this concealer. Love, love, love the highlighter. Oh my gosh, the highlighter. Probably out of everything, probably my most stand up. Oh, but that Wet n Wild bronzer. Oh, it's kind of hard. I enjoyed the shades that I did use out of the palette, but there's like a million other shades in here. Uh, so I will keep testing. Um, that white shade though was very, very chunky. So not a fan of that one. Powder is okay. Um, it definitely looks a little bit textured on my skin. Enjoyed the brow pomade. Definitely a really good affordable brow pomade if you were in the market for one. Loved the blush. Is that everything? Oh, and I didn't really like that mascara. I mean, I think it, I feel like it just needs to dry out and then we may have better results. But yeah, like honestly this, no, 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 no. But there you have it guys. I hope that you really enjoyed today's video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing some of these products tested. I got so many requests from you guys to test um, the products that I did put in that haul. And I mean, there's more coming. Obviously there's a lot more products. There was a lot more products in that haul and we will be testing more of them here as well. Uh, just in future videos, cause I've only got one face. I do have Brandon's face though. Maybe he'd be game. But give the video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Let me know what you think of the final look. I really, I feel like uh, one of the fembots out of Austin Powers. Like I feel like that's the vibe that I have going and I like it. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you think of the look and all of the products. Have you tried them in the comments down below and have a safe, healthy, happy day. Sending you heaps of love and I will talk to you all in my next video. Bye.